Have you ever picked up a retro RPG and felt like this game could be better if only it was a little more modernized? Today, we go into part 3 of my retro RPGs that need remake series. We will be focusing on the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Heyo! My name is Justin, aka Shanky, and this is Shanky JRPGs. The Game Boy was one of the first incredibly successful handhelds, with over 64 million units sold, and the Game Boy Color with an additional 54 million units sold. With such a huge install base, surely the console has some great RPGs. Well, personally, I believe it did, and I'm here to talk about 10 of the great ones that deserve remakes. Before we get started, do you love RPGs? Do you want weekly RPG content? Are you subscribed to my channel yet? If you aren't, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and tell me what your favorite Game Boy RPG is. Anyways, pop your corn and ice that drink. It's time to get into it and talk about 10 Game Boy RPGs that deserve a remake. Remember Star Ocean 2? Yeah, that game that just got a remaster? Did you know it has a direct sequel on the Game Boy Color? Star Ocean Blue Sphere is a direct sequel to Star Ocean Second Story, taking place only two years after the conclusion of that game. Unfortunately, Blue Sphere never had the chance to see a release in North America, which is one of the main reasons I feel it deserves a remake. It had an interesting shared experience system, and a neat 2D battle system somewhat akin to Tails. It's a shame that we never got this over on the side of the pond. I'd love to get the chance to experience what happened after the story of the second Star Ocean title, and continue an adventure with Claude, Rena, and Ashton, among various others. Especially considering how well Star Ocean Second Story R performed, now would be a prime time to remake the sequel of the game. Wait a minute, but Shinky, Mario Tennis? That's not an RPG. Au contraire, mon ami. The Mario sports games on the Game Boy Color were actually sports RPGs created by Camelot. Sound familiar? Camelot was the same company that did the Golden Sun games on the Game Boy Advance. That, however, is a topic for a future video though. Mario Tennis on the Game Boy Color doesn't really focus on Mario & Co, contrary to the title. You play the role as either Alex or Nina, two new students at Royal Academy. As you do exercises with your trainer and better players, you slowly increase your tennis stats so you can enter and win the Island Open. It's an interesting style of RPG, but it was a crazy amount of fun. Mario Golf is in the same style, but I had way more fun with Mario Tennis. And besides, if it's anything, at least it couldn't be as bad as Mario Tennis Aces on the Switch. Ugh. Another Japan-only release from a popular series. Grandia Parallel Trippers was a spin-off of the first Grandia title, which I've actually reviewed on my YouTube channel. Maybe check that out after you're done here? Grandia Parallel Trippers follows the story of Yuhi who gets transported with his friends Mizuki and Shiro to an alternate version of the Grandia One World. You get to meet the original characters, and is this just fan service? Yeah, probably. But Grandia is always about adventure, and this game did not disappoint. So why would this game deserve a remake? Well, Grandia HD just got a port to the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, so why not piggyback on the hype of those releases? Sure, Grandia Parallel Trippers didn't get the most spectacular scores, but it's Grandia and fans would love it. Not to mention it was composed by Noriyuki Iwadare, and they're an absolutely fantastic composer, so more of that music would be one heck of a positive. Hey Shinky, Final Fantasy Adventure has a remake already, are you crazy? Oh, Sword of Mana? That was a reimagining. Okay fine, Adventure of Mana? Yeah, that was a remake, and a dang good one. Okay, yeah, Final Fantasy Adventure, or Saiken Densetsu, does have a few reimaginings and remakes, but why should it get another? Well, have you played the remake of Trials of Mana? That game is absolutely spectacular. 
and that's how I want this remake to be done. Maybe take the expanded features of Sword of Mana, but keep the story more in line with Adventures of Mana, and throw in that Trials of Mana remake gameplay, and I'd say you have a dang fine remake. While we're at it, and yeah, it's not a Game Boy game, but please do the same thing to Secret of Mana, because my goodness, that remake in 2017 was, how else can I say, but catastrophic. Makes me shiver just thinking about it. <laughs> You know what the best type of RPG minigame is? Fishing! So why not an entire RPG based around that aspect? Legend of the River King 2 is quite literally that. It's just a fishing RPG. I will never understand how this series died off. Legend of the River King 2, which is actually the fourth game in the series, was developed by Natsum, the original creators of Harvest Moon. This game it's honestly just a wholesome time. The best way I can explain it is think Harvest Moon, but instead of managing a farm, you're a kid that just loves to fish, with four main activities, fishing, catching bugs, picking flowers, and swimming for shellfish. In the modern day, this could be a new spin on the cozy genre that seems to be incredibly common these days. I highly doubt this game would get a remake, because I don't think anyone has actually heard of this series. Doesn't mean I want it any less. It's time to fish. Recently, we got a new game in the Saga series, Saga Emerald Beyond. And a few years ago, we got a port of the first three games in the series on the Switch, as the collection of Saga. But what's that? We already have remakes of the first three games in the series? Final Fantasy XI got a remake on the Wonderswan Color? Which we never saw in North America, by the way. Final Fantasy Legend 2 and 3 got remakes on the DS, which again, we never saw in North America. Why, you're absolutely right. But again, unfortunately, they're nowhere to be seen here. Now, Saga is not a very popular game series at all. Either you don't really care for them and just let them pass on by you, or you love them. There is no in-between. Saga titles are hard to get into as the combat and leveling systems can be incredibly convoluted, but once you understand them, they're some of the most rewarding RPGs you'll ever play. I would love to see these games made in a more accessible way for people to enjoy. What are your thoughts on the Saga series? Let me know in the comments below. Remember Quest 64? One of the greatest RPGs of all time? Okay, maybe it's not the best RPG of all time, or even a good one for that matter, but did you know that the Game Boy Color got a sequel slash expansion to it? I personally think Quest, Brian's Journey, was loads better than Quest 64. It's a turn-based RPG with an absolutely beautiful art style, featuring more interesting characters than its N64 counterpart. Why remake something like this though? Quest hasn't seen anything in almost 25 years. Well, check out that cowlick. Brian was a master of the ultimate in hairstyles. Okay, but seriously, the gameplay of this game was just so spectacular, and it's such a lighthearted and charming game. One of those games that just makes you smile with every part of the story. And I'm all for happy, good-hearted stories. You're saying it all wrong. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. I love Harry Potter. <laughs> I grew up with the series, and it just makes me happy. The Game Boy Color Harry Potter games, Philosopher's Stone, and Chamber of Secrets were some amazing turn-based RPGs. I played the heck out of them in high school. Sure, they were really short, and they were incredibly easy, but I enjoyed them through and through. If they were remade, though, what would be the best way to do it? Honestly, just do them in the same style as Hogwarts Legacy. My biggest issue with Hogwarts Legacy is while it was in the wizarding world, it really had next to nothing to do with Harry Potter and co. I would love to get into some crazy mischief as Harry, Ron, and Hermione exploring Hogwarts Castle and unlocking all of its secrets. Besides, could you imagine a turn-based RPG with that graphical style? It would be amazing. But most of all, you gotta keep the card system in there as well though. It added a nice bit of RNG to the game and kept it fresh originally making each playthrough just a little bit different. 
card battle games are really hard to get right. Sometimes they do well, like Pokemon trading card game on the Game Boy Color. Or you get things like Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, which people will despise. Even though I totally love that game, please don't judge me, Imagination was one of the better card-based RPGs I've played. Imagination gave a sense of fantasy adventure like no other, where you recruited monsters as cards and battled other monsters with them, complete with Fire Emblem-style battle sequences. This is another game I played a lot of growing up, and the battle music really sticks in my head, as well as the Page Master looking art style. Has anyone ever heard of this game before? If so, what did you think about it? You knew this one was coming. It's not even a surprise at this point. I feel every single one of these videos, I've mentioned Zelda at least once. I've been wanting a remake of The Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Ages, and Oracle of Seasons ever since Link's Awakening got a remake. The two Oracle Zelda titles are some of the best portable action-adventure RPGs I've ever played. They both had such a great feel of adventure, and were both so unique despite looking identical. Completely different dungeons, and completely different focuses of gameplay, with one focusing on the action aspect, and another focusing on puzzle solving. I also hear that these are some of the best 2D Zelda games out there, even surpassing Link to the Past. That's gonna anger a couple people, isn't it? But anyways, unfortunately, I've never actually finished either one of the Oracle games, so I haven't had the chance to link them up to one another. Perhaps a remake done in the Link's Awakening remake style would convince me to actually finish them. So there you have it, 10 Game Boy and Game Boy Color RPGs that I feel need remakes. Sure, there were a few games in there that already had remakes, but what did you think of my list? Did I miss any? What would you add? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this list and want more lists and reviews, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and ding that notification bell so you get more JRPG goodness on a weekly basis. And while you're around, make sure to check out the Super Retro Force. We are a team of amazingly talented creators that cover a whole bunch of different gaming topics. Check out their links in the video description below. Give a sub, you won't regret it. Tell them the cactus sent ya. Anyways, thanks for hanging out, thanks a ton for your support, and as always, have a wonderful day. Super Retro Force.